Thank you for inviting me to be here. I appreciate this opportunity to not only bring the Lord's message to you, but have an opportunity and a, an excuse to come and worship you. Um, as, as many of you know, we've been here, what, two, two other times in the past month or so. Um, we don't need much of an excuse to be here, but uh, I appreciate the, uh, the invitation anyway. Um, I am going to apologize in advance. Yesterday, I was not feeling my best. Um, so, if I look at my notes a little bit more than I'm very used to seeing me look at my notes, I apologize. I did not have the chance to uh, look, look over them at all. I was uh, sick in bed. I couldn't get up. Um, my foot was killing me, and, and honestly, because of that, I had a migraine headache, and it was not good for me yesterday. Uh, but today, I'm feeling great. So, um, I appreciate that. You would think that the two extra hours between worship at North Lexington and, and 2 o'clock would, would help me, but unfortunately KFC took that time. Um, but I, I, did I do appreciate the uh, heads up from Russ and the, uh, the fun triangle that Russ, myself, and Mark Rogers had earlier today getting each other's phone numbers. So I, I appreciate uh, the time. Now, during the study uh, for this lesson, I, I discovered an answer to a question that's been plaguing the brotherhood for centuries. And I found it right there in, in, in the verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 13. See, see, for centuries, our brotherhood has been wondering, did Apostle Paul write the book of Hebrews? Yeah, we've heard many different commentaries, we've read different articles, one way or the other, and I have found definitive proof about whether Paul actually wrote it. You see, in, in Hebrews chapter 13, we have a lot of great commands there. And, and, and the reason I found the proof is with teenagers. And when was the last time you talked to a teenager? Eric, I'll remind you of a conversation from a teenager. Man, that test was so hard. I can't believe about that test. It was, it was just so hard. And I studied for a whole ten minutes. And none of the questions I studied about were in there. And, and that teacher is just so mean. You would think that she would give us a study guide or, or something. But, man, that was... Why they call them Bavarian cream donuts? I mean, I mean, they're not Bavarian. They're they're vanilla pudding. Why do they call them vanilla pudding donuts? But anyway, that teacher was so hard, Miss Bradshaw. Man, she just hates us. I failed that. Day. Did you catch the tangent there? You, and, and if you've had a conversation with with a teenager, you know they talk in tangents all the time, right? They're, they're talking about something. All of a sudden, bam, they're off on another subject without any warning. It has no relevance to the other conversation. It just popped into mind. And sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't. So tangents were all along the reason. The Apostle Paul could have written it. Because if you read our, uh, ch uh, chapter 13, you see a big long list of commands. You have let, do not, remember, let, keep, remember. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Oh, let's go back to the commands. Uh, let, do, and so on. You notice that? Command, command, command. Tangent has nothing to do really with the rest. But it actually does. I'm convinced that verse 8, the simplicity of verse 8, it is the anchor that holds all of these commands in Hebrews chapter 13. <laughs> this last chapter of the book of Hebrews holds a lot of tidbits, and I'm convinced that they were used um, as commands to correct some. Because they were very pointed, they were very sporadic, they were list, 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 and I, I want to submit to you that every single one of them are tied to their point of reference, which is verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I'm, I'm going to give you a little pop quiz here. What do Jim Reeves, JFK, and Buddy Holly have in common? Teenagers, your answer is, I don't know many of the three of them. I understand that. But, but for those that are not teenagers, what do they have in common? You go, well, they're all dead. Okay, yes, let's get, keep going. Well, they all died in plane crashes. Yeah, but let's, let's keep going. See, the similarity is actually even, even closer to that because they died in plane crashes where the pilot was not fully trained in instrument flying. You see, in each of these three cases, 
while, while it's a requirement to be trained in instrumental, in instrumental piloting, it's not a requirement that you, you have to be able to solely fly on instruments. And all three of these gentlemen died because their pilots lost their horizon line. It got, it got either cloudy, it got rainy, something happened to where they had no visibility out of their windshield. And somehow they kind of got mixed up. Up was down and down was up. It's called spatial disorientation. But they lost their horizon line. They lost their point of reference. And when that happened, something bad happened. Well, if, if we lose our point of reference, if we lose our horizon line, something bad is going to happen. And, and for our study today, I want us to keep in mind our horizon line. Our point of reference. And that is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So, with that in mind, let's look at seven specific issues I'm convinced that the Hebrew writer was trying to overcome in Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to start with issue number one. Verse one. Let brotherly love Continue. We have to deal with this issue continually, right? I mean, when we meet each other every Sunday morning, or most of every Sunday morning, uh, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. But beyond that, we also have to deal. We also have to deal with our brothers and sisters when they're in fellowship meals, like the men's, men's meeting, right? Or when we're putting together baskets for food with food in them, right? Or when we're getting the toy drive together, or whatever it happens to be, we have. To deal with our brothers and sisters throughout the week. And, and in a small community like Paris, you do it even more because you probably see each other throughout the week. And, and so the command to love our brothers and sisters isn't something that's just on Sundays and, and Wednesdays. It's, it's let it continue. And we sometimes have a problem with that, right? It's not because of our hearts. It's not because we don't want to. But, but it all goes around with the, the sole problem with the church. And, and you I saw some eyebrows. See, there's no problems in the design of the church. No problems there whatsoever. There's no problems with the leadership of the church, right? There, there, there's no problems with, with true doctrine that, that the church is supposed to teach. The problem comes into effect because the church is made of people. And humans, well, we sometimes get our feelings hurt, right? We have our flaws within ourselves. And, and because of that, as humans, we sometimes, as I said, get our feelings hurt. It's going to be inevitable that at one point or another, somebody's going to say something. Or somebody's going to do something that's going to make us, make us hurt. And as humans, sometimes, well, sometimes we blow things out of proportion. We exaggerate, right? And what was it? Yesterday they had the World Cup draw, and, and for the next year's World Cup. And I guarantee you, at some point in time, one of these athletes are going to breathe on another athlete. And they're going to fly through the air, and, and you've ever watched soccer, you've seen them do it. They, they you know, roll on the ground, grab a knee, or grab an elbow, or something, because somebody slided them slightly, and they want to get the call. They want that attention, they want to get that call, so they just roll on the ground for, for a few minutes, and finally the referee goes, okay, yellow card, or red card, or whatever. But as humans, we do that. We exaggerate just a little. We, we go, can you believe the elders picked this reddish-brown carpet? What, what were they thinking? Our sister, I was trying to do so, so good for her. And you know what? I was trying to do good, and she just doesn't appreciate anything. She didn't say thank you, nothing. Or, I got an email the other day, and you know what? They thought I missed service because I was watching the UK ball game. It happens, right? And what do we do sometimes? As I said, we blow it out of proportion. I'm going to tell her off. I'm going to go straight to the elders and I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Right? Sometimes we do that. Sometimes it festers up inside of us. Right? So, so I'm going to submit to you that, that the Bible is very clear that we are supposed to love our brothers continually. Let brotherly love continue. And how do I do that? We do that by keeping our eye on that horizon line. Keeping our eye on that, that anchor, that point of reference. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus doesn't change. 
And Jesus died for their brothers and sisters in addition to you. So, so I've got to imitate that love. Nothing is worse than being having a great, great reputation and making one mistake and people remembering it forever. In Philippians chapter 4, we are told of two ladies. And I'm going to kill these names. But one is Sidiki and the other is Yodis. We don't know much about these two ladies. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. We don't know much about them. The entire Bible is almost silent about these two ladies. But here's what we know. Forever until the end of time, we know they were bickering. Because the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, it says specifically that we want to exhort them that they may be one in the Lord. So forever and ever and ever, as, as long as people were reading the Bible, they're going to know nothing about these two ladies except they were bigger. They might have been the greatest ladies in the world. We don't know. But we know they were bigger, in right? Romans chapter 12, verse 18 tells us that we are to get along with everyone. But notice it has a small little caveat. Look at it. If you can turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it says, Get along with everyone as much as it depends on you. See, I can't control my brothers and sisters. I can't control what they do. But I can control my reaction to them. Right? I can control that. I can control me. So I am to get along with every one of my brothers and sisters, or everyone specifically, as much as it is possible with me. So how do we do that? Number one, look to see if I misunderstood something. You know, in this world where we're texting everything and emailing everything, you know how easy it is to tell sarcasm in an email? It's impossible. How about, how about somebody saying something they're really joking? And you don't get it. Can you tell that in an email? How about if they're, they're stressing one point and, and bring up something else that they really don't mean to stress, but they bring it up, but they're really stressing something else, can you tell that in an email? Or in a text? You can't, can you? Even in a life conversation. As my wife, I misunderstand things a whole lot. I, I do. So, so is it possible that when they said something to you, they weren't criticizing or they weren't trying to hurt your feelings, you just go, misunderstood. Because it's possible, right? But, but if you're 100% sure that, that you didn't misunderstand it, go to step two. What is in my brother or sister's life that's causing them stress or strain that they would say something they really don't mean? Or worse, they, they say something they really mean that they previously wouldn't have said if they had that filter, right? But what's going on in their life is there, is there stress at work for them at home? If that's the case, maybe we just need a little thicker skin. You know, maybe we just need to be there for them because they're going through a, a trial and they really don't mean what happened, but, but it just came out at the wrong time. Can that be possible? And, and if it's that case, shouldn't we be there for them? Offer them encouragement. Not get our feelings hurt. Grow that thicker skin and, and be there for them. And if that's not possible, the third step is to look inside. Are we truly thinking about all the blessings that God has blessed us with? Because I'll submit to you, if our heart is full of thankfulness and appreciation, there's no room for hurt feelings. If we truly understand the sacrifice that God gave for us, and truly appreciate all, all the things that we have. All the blessings that we have. All the peace, the security. Being able to worship God without, without persecution. If we truly understand all the blessings that we have and truly appreciate it, is there any room for a hurt feelings? I will submit to you that it's not. So, so we are to let brotherly 